and welcome to Hard Talk Extra. I'm Gavin Esler. My guest today has been compared to the great portrait painters Joshua Reynolds and Van Dyck. His home is quite simply anywhere in the world that's glamorous, from the Caribbean to the south of France. He is the world's most famous fashion photographer, and he's worked with everyone from Kate Moss to Princess Diana. Mario Testino, welcome to Hard Talk Extra. Now, you are the Thank curator you. of this exhibition going on around us here in the Royal Academy. Tell us a bit about it. Well, first, curator feels a little bit funny for me because I'm not really an art ex expert as such. I guess I just elected them. The reason why I selected this is because I came to this fair last year, which I think is a very exciting idea for London to have its own photo fair, seeing as so many... So much of photography comes from England, you know, I mean, the whole beginning of colour, there's a big English influence in it, so it's, I think, fantastic that they bring this fair here. As you probably know, this fair existed before in Paris, and I used to frequent it, and I actually quite like the intimacy of this one. But if you go around the, the fair, you will notice that most of the work in the fair is vintage prints, really, you know, it's not much about contemporary fine art. And what I thought was that it was interesting to see the difference between photographers and artists that use photography, which I think has a different take on it. You know, a photographer documents an object or a person or a place or an event or something is documented. Well, these people, in a funny way, they document a dream or an idea or, you know, something different. And many times when you look at the picture, unless you know a little bit of it, sometimes you don't really grasp it really quickly. Because there's a narrative, it's not there's just a the, the there's a certain concept behind or something they want to say that they've chosen photography as their means because it's easy to document something but you know it's not always exactly what you see and I've always, I don't know, I'm, I like to feed myself you know as a photographer it's fascinating seeing what fine artists do because of the sheer freedom that they have. You know, there's no limitations. And a lot of these are very un-Mario Testino-like. I mean, the ones behind you, there's, there's garbage. These are not photographs that anyone would yeah. associate with you, except that you are interested in. I guess, well, we're always interested by things that aren't what we do, no? I mean, I think it'd be mad for me to go and do a fashion photography exhibition here because it's my business, what I do every day, is what people see of me every day. And as I was saying before, I like to feed myself, and they feed me Maybe not so much, you know, we're all influenced by photography. When I started being a photographer, I used to look at Helmut Newton and Irving Penn and Richard Avedon and Cecil Beaton, and that were my references because that was the business I was trying to get into. Whilst in this case, I started collecting 10 years ago just out of curiosity. I mean, it is a bug and, you know, like a disease, I think. You know, once you get into it, it's impossible to control it. But I guess shopping is a thing that we all have, you know. I travel a lot and in any spare moment, the people in my team, the first thing they do is they go shopping, you know? <laughs> me, I get my clothes given to me, so I don't need clothes, and much else, I'm, you know. So I got interested in fine art. So I started looking at galleries around the world and what they do and what they have and what their artists do, and hence this show. Just, I guess, to show other things that excite me, you know, and other things where I get influenced and where I, I'm surprised. I think that's the reason, really. You described yourself, though, as a, I'm a commercial artist. My job is to sell clothes. Exactly. Commercial and artist. Exactly. Both, both are important. You've got to sell. Well, because commerce without art is not very sellable nowadays. You know, people have become very discerning about what they want to buy. So, obviously, you have to tempt them with beauty, with excitement, with dreams, with, you know, that's what we sell. We sell a dream. Maybe that's my relationship to them, that they have a dream and they record it through photography, I don't know. But it's true that my job is to sell and I'm always fascinated by them because if they want to do a piece of rubbish and they want to arrange it for it to look like the most beautiful composition <laughs> possible, you know, then that is their choice and they can do it. It's a big risk because not many people are interested in rubbish, you know, but it depends whether all of a sudden you find beauty in rubbish. And, and yours is less risky in that sense because you find beauty in beauty. Yeah, it's more risky in other senses because it's very hard to be a fashion photographer. It's a, you have to combine a lot of different things, you know, you have to be good with people, you have to know about clothes, you have to know about hair, you have to know about makeup, you have to know about light, you have to know about human relations, and you have to know about business, because it is a business at the end of the day, you know, it's a, it's a complex, it's a complex profession, so I wouldn't say it's less easy, I would say in a funny way it's harder, 
They're, they're both hard in different ways. Mine is harder because I have a lot of restraints, and with those restraints, I have to produce the best I can. Theirs is hard because they don't have anything, and they have to create out of nothing. I mean, one way of looking at any photographer's work is this is something which was taken in one hundredth of a second or one two hundred and fiftieth of a second. That's that. for me. That's my fascination with photography. But, because it, but it doesn't take that time, does it? Well, I have to say, and I'm. Um, instant that occurs in a thousandth of a second and doesn't repeat itself a minute 999 before or after, it's, uh, it's quite magical if you capture that moment. I don't know if it happens to you. Sometimes you go down the street and you see something. And, I mean, I'm a photographer, so I wish I had my camera, but maybe you will tell your friend, look, 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 and a second afterwards, it's gone. Mm -hmm. I find it quite magical to capture those moments because those are the magical moments in life. So. That's what I try to recreate in my work. But when you photograph Kate Moss, who's a special favorite of yours, that one thousandth of a second that makes it is, it. Yes, because when you get the film and you look at, maybe you do 200 frames, but there's one that works. One. One. Uh, to me, you know, at the end of the day, it's quite obvious which is the image. Because you're trying to create, you know, the way I work is that I create something to then destroy it. Because I like perfection in the concept but I don't like perfection in life because I find it boring. You know, I love to go in, in a, into a beautiful room, but I like some sort of decadence in it because I know I find it too clean. So, and that's what I do, you know, I perfect my image and then I try and capture a moment when she's perfectly dressed, perfectly made up. How long does it take you to get to that perfect moment? We have a limited amount of time. I would say that a picture can take me up to an hour. That's my time to do a picture. You know, I do a limited amount of pictures a day I have to allocate a certain amount of time for her makeup and styling. Then when the girl is ready, I have to produce five pictures, so I only have an hour for each of those pictures. And, you know, sometimes I get it immediately, and sometimes it takes me a long time. It depends on my energy, because I think a lot of it depends on how foolish can I be that day, in a funny way. I have to break the ice, you know, and to break the ice, you have to, like, I don't know, make them feel that it's not a problem for you to look completely ridiculous because then they can feel looser at being themselves. But you know, with, with Kate Moss, whom you, you've worked with so often and your uh, photographs are amazing and you seem to get something beneath the skin that other people don't get with her, you don't have to break the ice, do you? She's a, she's a friend, you, you, well, you, you work with her. I have to break or create, maybe it's not so much about breaking or maybe it is about breaking, a certain comfortability that exists between us in that she can probably hope that because I'm photographing her, it'll just look great. It is an effort, you know, because with her, it's even more of an effort because I have to outdo what I've already done. I hate repeating. I find repeating, I mean, it's great for commerce, but it's not very exciting for my own personal life. I like to be challenged every day. I like to find something new every day. You know, I like to feel I'm moving forward, and for that, you know, you need an extra effort. I'm, I'm not sure if this is criticism of you, but uh, you're often accused of being a flatterer. Is that, is that, is that a good thing to be? Because you, you know, I've taken an attitude in life. You can either approach life with a smile or you can approach life with a grim face. I like a smile because I like to laugh, I like to have a good time. I notice that in my business, I have to make people look at their most beautiful. People look at their most beautiful when nobody's looking at them. So in order to get that moment you have to give people a certain sort of security in what they are portraying at the moment if you go and look at somebody and you don't say anything they probably think god i must be looking not that good if you go and say oh my god you look incredible they immediately feel i look great because he's got he knows what good is and if he thinks i look great i must look great so all of a sudden they give great that's why you've been compared to van dyke and joshua reynolds because you create celebrity, you make them feel at ease, and you make them look good. You know, I'm lucky. I like people. You know, I feel uh, I much more prefer saying to the woman at the cashier something like, oh, I love your nails. If, if, if that's the only thing I can see that I like, than not say anything. Because in a funny way, it's like making people feel good, you know? Mm. And feel good is great. I mean, if more people were to tell us every day, you know, I come in here to this show, I've chosen these images, and even though I have certain confirmation from people whose opinion I trust and they say to me it's good. I'm still terrified. I want to leave now and not have to go through that grueling thing of people looking at me and saying, you know, not saying anything and maybe insinuating these. Are... Ah, so you, you like it as well. You like people of to course. say these are wonderful of images, course. Mario. What a fantastic man you are choosing all this great stuff. Well, 
you know, whenever you do anything, don't you feel that when you do a program, do you want them to tell you you were terrible in it, or would you rather them Not tell often, you no. would, you were good? You know, it's we need it. We're humans. I think that compliments and I don't know. It's like being paid. You know, most of us do jobs for money. Money is the same thing as that. When you photograph Diana, Princess of Wales, at this terrible low point of her life, just a few months before her her death. You made her look wonderful. You made her look But happy. maybe it wasn't a terrible low point uh. in her life. Maybe it was a good point in her life. You know, you must understand that somebody like Princess Diana, she went, you know, raised in a certain manner, married probably earlier than she should have married. I don't know, you know, or whatever the situation was. And maybe it was a good moment, I think, for her because she, I don't know, I mean, I photographed it in the dresses that she was selling which were the dresses that she had worn before, but she was wearing a Versace dress and it made her look radiant, you know? So it's, um, a lot of people have said this to me that I made, I don't know, I often feel that people say to me that I made out of something that wasn't incredible, something incredible, but I only think that I managed to capture the incredible that was there, you know, you cannot, Kate Moss is not made by me. She is amazing. You know, I just register and document it. And but, but you bring it out of her? Yeah, of course. I try to create a, a reaction from them. Once an editor in New York said to me, you know, when I started working, I wasn't doing really that well. And, and I was recommended to start using the top models. And so I started using the top models. But I was sort of afraid of them because they were more successful than me so I didn't even dare to say much of how they should look and an editor said to me you know this girl will come to your studio like she will go to every single other photographer and she will give you all what she has to give unless you bring something else out it's not your picture it's her picture and so that made me think well maybe it is about bringing something out and the only thing I can bring out is you know comfort I guess and just making them feel themselves. The Los Angeles Times said of you, Testino is the architect of that rare place in the imagination where everyone <laughs> is beautiful, happy and enviable, at least for a moment, then you can turn the page. Thank God they say that, because <laughs> well, once nice. I was criticised, somebody said to that I was just hot, hot, hot. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound, you know, too much of a... I think it's better that's, than being wet, wet, wet. Exactly, <laughs> that's what I thought, but, you know, I run a business, the, you know, it's what I do. I try to earn money to pay my rent, to pay it, to pay my car, my assistance, like all of us, you know, so if I've managed to create that, it's a success because that's what I set out to do, I, I, I guess. But then again, that's what I set out to do now. Maybe now I have to do something else in order not to get stuck in that, no? But part of the interest, I mean, in this exhibition and talking about your work in relation to these photographs is, the suggestion is that your work is ephemeral. It's, it's about fashion, so therefore we turn the page and we move on. But we don't entirely move on, do we? I mean, some of the images I mean, that you've captured... I mean, some images become, you know... Iconic. Iconic. I mean, I think it would be unfair to say that Avedon and Penn and Newton don't have images that all of us know. You know, they're as much part of our culture as anything else. And not just our popular culture. I mean, we are in the Royal Academy. It's worth pointing out. I know. You know it's a posh place. I know. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> you should have put a tie on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you don't spend the small hours agonising about whether if what you do is art or not. No, I have no qualms about that. I mean, I obviously know that there is an artistic element to it. I am a commercial artist, you know. I mean, I could choose this route and be a fine artist if I decide to change the process that I do my work, because it is a different process, you know. This, and fine artists, they have an idea and they can mull over the idea, they can reflect over it, they can do it, redo it, undo it, change it, decide to start all over again. Us, we're limited by time, by compromise, by engagement, by money, by, you know, every time I go to do a picture, I'm conscious that whoever has hired me for that day is spending a certain amount of money. It's usually, you know, large amounts because there's so many people involved. There's locations involved, lighting, assistance, hair, makeup, you know, the whole... So I can't do that, really. I have, I have no choice but to make it work there and then. But you do also spend your entire life with the most beautiful women in the world, and how hard is that? Beauty is not all, you know. Sometimes there's beautiful people in front of you and they have nothing to say, and you're like, ooh, yes, great, you're beautiful. 
Where's the camera? But it is true that I don't have the, the, the space that fine artists have to reflect. You know, that I think is the, basically the basic thing. I have to act upon instinct and it's every day. We work every single day. You know, I don't have six months to do one picture. You really just about work every day of your life? Well, you know, if I'm not shooting, I'm preparing for a shoot or checking things or going to locations or... It's a, it's a full-time job. Gwyneth Paltrow, I mean, another one, another beautiful woman, said of you, Mario's photos are so fresh without ever trying to be anything. You've also been called an upmarket happy snapper. There's a bit of that in you. Yeah, that's it? what I was going to mention before, that somebody called me that on one of those um, one to a hundred, I think, that they do of fashion photographers. You know, I am what I am. I don't pretend to be anything else that, than a fashion... You? No, not at all. I am happy and snappy. What's the problem with it? You know, as long as I'm living the life I like to live and flying in the class I like to fly and staying in the place I like to stay, they can be happy and snappy. If, not, if that's what I'm feeling and the clients are reacting to it, I'm trying to me, think. My, the criticism in my business at the end of the day is whether we get the work or not. That's, that's what counts, you know, what X or Y think it's, you know, some people tell you you're great, some people tell you that's terrible, so... And you're still getting paid? That's, for me, it's a business, you know? How did you get here? I mean, you, you were born in Peru to quite a, quite a wealthy family? <coughs> no, middle-class no, family. Middle-class family, yeah. in Lima. Uh, very generous parents and very dedicated to their children. Their children was everything, so I was quite lucky to live a life as if I was maybe more well-off than what I really was, you know? So. And then I came here to study and I got into photography and... It wasn't when you were five years old you first... Oh, no, not at all. I, when I finished school I did a year of economy. Mathematics was my strength at school. So I thought it was... I didn't know really what to do and I thought that that would be a good choice seeing as I was good at it, but I hated it. So I did a year of economy, then I changed and went... did two years of law school and didn't like that either. And I was lucky that my father wasn't that mean and allowed me to carry on trying. And when I said, I'm finally going to be a fashion photographer, he was like, why? <laughs> you know, you're going to starve. And, you and know. He, how long did it take him to get it? <clears throat> I guess when I started, when he started seeing my name in magazines, because it was his name too. We were called the same, so it was quite exciting. Were, I guess. They, were they proud of you? Yeah, very. My mother's still alive, and she's, she came when I had my show at the National Portrait Gallery, and she couldn't believe it, because sometimes... You know, even though she comes and visits, she doesn't really live my life, you know. She's in Peru, calm in her house, and I guess it was quite like a shock. Suddenly her little boy is very, very famous. Yeah. She, there's a lovely quote. Your mother suggested as you were growing up you were a bit ugly and supposed to have said to you, man is like a bear, the uglier the, the better. better. Well, That's not very I nice. had a sister that was really beautiful, my older sister. She's only a year older than me, and we were stopped everywhere because of her beauty. and they would look at me and turn around and not say anything and carry on about her. And I was a kid, you know, so I guess my mother just uh, said, it's a saying in Spanish, it rhymes in Spanish, you know, the man is like a bear, the uglier the better. I mean, <laughs> if you want to make it rhyme in, in English, but not in any detrimental way. I guess she just wanted to make me feel that beauty is not that important for a man. It's an interesting comment to somebody who's a fashion photographer and who ends up doing well, what you do, isn't I it? I think vanity in a man, it's... I mean, it's limited what you can really be vain before it becomes like a do you bit not like soapy. And... Do you don't like photographing men, really? I mean, you must oh, yes, no, women. no, no, I really like photographing men. I just did a big thing on Brad Pitt. I mean, it's true I don't do it that often because, you know, I'm good with women and women are harder than men because they require hair, makeup. You know, it's more of a production. The man, you don't need to do much. You just put a pair of jeans and a shirt on them, and that's so a man, you know. When Brad so Pitt walks in, and you just... I just photographed him for American GQ, and it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. It was a new, different experience for me. Someone once said of you, Tom Ford, actually, from Gucci, said of you, wherever Mario goes, he has a great time, and you have a great time with Mario. I mean, that's, that's the core of it, isn't it? That you kind of... <clears throat> look... <laughs> bring out the, the happiness in people. Well... My life is a funny life because I don't spend more than 10 days really in hardly anywhere for the last 15 years. So your home's in London, but you're never here, Yeah, right? my home's London and I spend maybe three months of the year intermittently on weekends. I try and come. You know, London is not really a business base for us because fashion in this country is not what it, what it means for Italians or Americans or French. It's a big industry there. And 
here it's a big industry, but I guess not at that level. I don't know, not on a fashion point of view, but more on a necessity of clothes, you know? So, consequently, I have to go elsewhere to work. And when you spend a life like that, where you're always in hotels, you're always having to eat at restaurants, you, you know, it's not like you finish your day, you go home, you lie down, you read a book, you're, you know, you're in your environment. You're constantly on a different environment. So it's either you make your life fun or your life can become pretty tedious. It could be very empty You know, as well. so for me, I don't know, it's a choice I've done. And I guess I grew up with a lot of deaths in my life. I've had deaths, yes. deaths, yeah, a lot. Weirdly enough, my friend, my brother, my nanny, my, grand my grandparents were still alive, so I went through the, you know, my teacher here in London died next to me. I've had a lot of death as young and it made me I guess think you know you better enjoy it because you're here today and gone tomorrow. Do you think I mean what we see of your work are these beautiful people, rich people, successful people. The secret that we're all thinking about is do they lead happy lives? Do they? I don't think most of them are the happiest people I know, no. I find that it's a trap. You know fame is a trap. People fall into it. You know people start believing what people believe of you and they start alienating everybody and closing themselves into this little... I don't think you can be very happy like that because you're constantly thinking that people are using you or people want something out of you or... So, but there are some people that know how to live it well. I mean, Kate, I think Kate most lives her life, you know, she enjoys herself, she's fun, she's... Because that's why I'm so obsessed about her because at the end of the day, there are a lot of beautiful girls, but it's how life enhancing that experience was. You know, when you spend a day with Kate, you're full. Sometimes I spend a day with people and I feel I've only had my starter, you know, and, but I've been waiting for hours for the main course. <laughs> you, know, you know what strikes me talking to you is that underneath it all, charm, fun, you must be very ambitious, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Of course, I'm hugely ambitious. But I'm not ambitious necessarily in an economical way. I'm hugely ambitious with myself. Don't forget I'm mathematical. So you know, you know two and two are four. So yes, I would love to take myself to a level that I think would surprise me one day, you know? I mean, I am surprised by some people, by their minds, by their talents, by their quality, you know? And I strive to have all those qualities in one, it's, and it's hard. And, so if you're not ambitious, you sort of give up half the way. There are a lot of photographers that at some moment, they become very successful, and then they just stay doing the same thing for the next 20 years. And I guess that just shows that they're more content. Maybe my work is my main thing in my life. You know, it's what really makes me kick, more than a party, more than the beach, more than, because at the end of the day, that's what I tend to try and do all the time. Mario Testino, thanks very much for talking to me. Thank you. Me.